It's a pleasure to be in Carrick on Shore. Um, I haven't been here in a while, but I have very fond memories of schoolboy bicycle racing in Carrick on Shore in 1988 or 89, um, when this town was the mecca for schoolboy cyclists all over the southeast, and we loved it. Um, and I have an abiding memory of the N25 as it comes in from, from Mooncoin, where the railway bridges were just that bend. And if you wanted to be well placed, you had to be in the top 10 when you came to that bridge. And by the time I finally mastered the change of course the next year, <laughs> but, um, uh, it's, it's, it was a great town for, for that at the time. Um, I have the privilege of working for the Heritage Council. And I want to give a little bit of thought or um, sense of our experience in terms of historic towns. Uh, a project we've been doing on historic towns in Ireland with Fulch Ireland and the Department of Arts Arts in the and what we've learned from that and how that might work with uh, Carrick on Shore. The Minister made a really interesting point when she spoke about heritage. Um, I think she made the point that on the a heritage forum we were very much talking about what is heritage. And she seemed to be saying, well, we actually got to the point where we thought, well, it's about people. And she's bang on the money because there was a very interesting document produced by the EU Commission lately where they said, heritage, yeah, it's brilliant. It's actually a huge driver for change, that's what they were saying. Socially, economically, culturally, everything in a European context. Um, and the Commission said, conservation is becoming more people-centric. Old approaches sought to protect heritage by isolating it from daily life. New approaches focus on making it fully part of the local community. Sites are given a second life and meaning that speak to contemporary needs and concerns. And that's very much where practice is, is evolving in terms of heritage. Um, and to give you an example of that, um, what, what are people's perceptions? What are their experiences of monuments? How can we interpret it for them? How do people see and think about monuments rather than a previous tradition of simply conserving it, worrying about um, uh, how we care for it, and excluding people? So there's very much a, a sea change there. Um, but is there an economic reason? Again, the minister touched on this. Around about 2012, the Heritage Council and the OPW um, commissioned a, a report from a, an economic consultancy, ECRIS. And effectively what it said was approximately 30,000 full-time jobs, equivalent to 1.5% of our employment is our, in Ireland, is based upon heritage. Now, that is not, it's not to be sneezed at. 1.2 billion of the national economy, 1% of national income. As a cultural driver of tourism, and I know Paddy will cover this in far more detail, 27% of EU travellers indicate that cultural heritage is a key factor when they go on their holidays. In a more general sense, distinctive historic places have been shown over and over again to be highly attractive to high quality creative startups, but high end retail and educational institutes. So, heritage is very much a driver of creating the dynamic and interesting places. Um, now, being really honest, I'm not going to try to tell you that Carrick and Shore can attract an educational institute. I'm not going to try to tell you that it's going to attract high-end retail like H&M or the House of Fraser. What I'm saying is that you can create a much more interesting offering in terms of shopping and for a place for people to stay with a few small changes. Um, and I'll just give you some examples. Um, like I said, with Fulge Ireland, uh, the Heritage Council, the Department of Arts, Heritage and Talk, we started a, a pilot on, called the Heritage Towns Initiative. And we picked three towns, uh, the Stolp, Westport, and Simon will tell you a lot more about Westport this evening, uh, and Yall. Um, this is Westport House some time ago, getting a new roof. The idea was to keep the, the rain out. Um, as I'm sure Simon will tell you, it has some absolutely amazing 18th century wallpaper from China, so keeping the rain out is a, is a good idea. Um, so there's the stall. Um, <coughs> North Kerry, uh, some really interesting late 20th century plaster mouldings all over the town. Really interesting and tangible heritage, uh, literary heritage, John B. <coughs> Keane, uh, Brendan Kennelly, uh, and others. Um, and a really interesting visitor experience in this Kerry Writer Centre. Uh, fantastic cultural experience of the horses. Uh, interesting open spaces. Uh, Yaw. Uh, East Cork, a medieval wall town, 
I've uh, been doing a lot of work on the conservation of medieval town walls over the last decade or so, uh, trying to up the quality of design in this area there, near um, St. Mary's Church, uh, public ground improvements, really interesting collection of medieval buildings and historic street fronts. But it had its problems in terms of vacancy, um, dereliction, and high unemployment rate. So we took these three towns, and I mean, I'm not going to try to tell you that Lowell's problems have been solved overnight, but I think we had, we had an interesting mix of towns there. Listowel was doing nicely, it was doing okay. Westport, you'll hear more, was doing fantastic. Um, the idea was to get all these towns learning from each other. Um, and we produced this guidance framework for each town to produce a plan. And we, we broke it down into six steps. The first was understand the town and its heritage. What makes it distinct? What's of interest? Um, build up local support. Because one of the key themes I'm going to say here this evening is, I think the minister touched upon it as well, um, waiting for the government, waiting for national agencies, waiting for local government to do something. You might get somewhere, but you know, it works far better if you work in partnership. If it's, as the minister said, from the grassroots up, and it's cooperative and it's genuine partnership. Um, so that was the idea of building up local support. And then, to be really honest, what are the challenges? Where are the opportunities? And in a sense, that's a hard, hard enough task because it's a little bit like stepping outside and looking, having a real good hard look at your town and saying, well, what genuinely are the problems? But not getting really bogged down in a kind of a sea of negativity. Actually saying, well, okay, that's a problem. Let's see what we can do about it. Develop a clear vision. What do you want to concentrate on? Where, where do you want to go? And then actions to try and implement, and then obviously review and monitor. So each of those three towns is now producing a, a plan with this in mind. And in, par in tandem with this, we have a small pot of money from Falter Ireland and the department. And there's a series of projects going on. Interpretation, signage, conservation, public awareness, things like that. And just trying to preserve the, the basic fabric of the town. Um, and as part of this, one of Paddy's colleagues, Nessa Skeen, did some visitor surveys. And the findings were actually really, really interesting. Because we surveyed each of the three towns. And it was all done by uh, Behaviour and Attitudes, a professional company. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in it that you can do to help your town. Now, there's obviously stuff, but friendliness of the locals uh, down there at the bottom. But I think what's really interesting are the top two. Uh, visual presentations of the buildings or monuments. Quality of interpretations of museums, visitor attractions, and heritage sites. These are scoring some of the highest. Now, if you're in a town, if you're in a local authority, these are the kinds of things that you have some measure of control over. OK, not fully, maybe, but there's a lot you can do there. There's a little bit less you can control in terms of friendliness of the locals. A um, little bit, maybe, public art. But what can you change? What have you the power to change that will actually make people leave your town with two things in mind? The thought of returning or the thought of recommending it to somebody. This is was in such and such a town, really interesting place, well worth a visit. You can't buy that anywhere. Um, so the HTI. Well, uh, what next? Um, each town drafts its plan. So that's currently ongoing. This stole you all in Westport. Um, now, I should have an asterisk at the end of this. Potential expansion of the HTI nationally in 2015. Um, the asterisk should really be, we'd have to see what comes in the budget, the revised estimates in December. Um, so that will really shape the, the degree of expansion for that. But just finally, what have we learned? Well, from going around to towns like Listowel, Yall, and particularly Westport, one of the key ideas, one of the key things we've seen is local leadership. Whether that's somebody in the local council, or it's somebody in a local retail body, or a chambers, um, it's absolutely crucial. Somebody to say, this is what we need. We've got to change. We've got to do something. We've got to... Uh, we've got to move along A, B, and C. Um, second, a structure. Structure for partnership. Uh, some kind of a structure, and you seem to have something similar here with the, the COS, TEDC group, uh, to bring people together and to discuss and to try and move things along and identify actions. A shared vision and a plan-led approach. And I think you really hear that from Simon. A plan-led approach. A plan that people can see, that's visible, that people have an input in, that have had a chance to shape, that there are realistic measures in, is a really important thing. And actually in Ireland, if you have a good plan, you have a really good chance of getting funding. Because 
bodies like the Heritage Council, uh, local authorities. It's easier. I'm not saying it's it's. I'm not saying it's it's easy, but it's certainly easier to fund something to a well thought out, coherent plan. Community based, and this comes back to the point I was making. <coughs> Don't sit and wait for the government to do everything. Working in partnership. Um, yeah, this is a pet subject of mine. You hear a lot of talk in, in, in heritage circles about a top-down approach or a bottom-up approach. The real formula to make it work is somewhere in between. National agencies, local, uh, local government, and the community working together. Quick wins. Um, I think the minister again mentioned long-term plans, short-term, and medium. Well, for the historic towns initiative, because we were starting up, we went for a series of quick wins as well. Simple things like painting the facades of streets and houses to, to you know, that broken window theory. When you drive into a town as a visitor, well, that's clean, that's nice. I'd like to stop there, I'd like a cup of coffee. That actually works. Um, so things like street fa uh, facade painting, tidying, things like that. And then utilize existing assets or access. Now, what on earth do I mean by that? Well, if you think of Kilkenny, one of the greatest things Kilkenny has in terms of um, has a lot going for it, but um, one of them is its castle. It brings 250,000 people a year into the city. Um, the town feeds off that. If you think of Westport, the synergy between the estate, the house, and the town is really important. And there are numerous other examples around Ireland. And the question I have for you is, do you think in Carrick and Shore you get the same bang out of the Black Tom's castle, out of Warren Castle? Is that something that could be looked at? Look at this fantastic green space that there is around it. Um, and that's what I mean by an axis. Get the axis right between <coughs> the castle and the town. Get people coming there, get them to come to the town, get them to have a cup of coffee. And I'm sure there are things that you'll talk about later today. Um, and then I think you'll see it in Westport. It's my final point. Heritage, I think, can provide a competitive advantage. Um, it'll make people stop. It'll make people remember your town. <coughs> But at the same time, <coughs> it's not easy. It can be done, but it needs hard work and a lot of the things that we've seen here. Thank you.